Welcome to our program, The China Briefing. Today, we have a lineup of fascinating news stories to discuss. First up, China has accused Britain's MI6 of recruiting two Chinese state staffers as spies. The couple, identified only as Wang and Zhu, were allegedly recruited while Wang was studying in the UK, and they are now under investigation. This development adds another layer to the ongoing espionage accusations between China and Britain. In financial news, Hong Kong stocks have experienced their biggest jump in a month, thanks to gains by tech giants Alibaba and Tencent. A private report showing the expansion of the services sector in mainland China has boosted investor confidence, leading to a 2.5% rise in the Hang Seng Index. This marks the largest advance since early May, showcasing the resilience of the market. Lastly, as Beijing continues to crack down on commemorations of the 1989 Tiananmen Square crackdown, overseas communities are stepping up to keep the memories alive. Activists in the US, Canada, UK, Australia, and Taiwan are organizing various events such as talks, rallies, and exhibitions to honor the victims and preserve the historical memory. These efforts are crucial in counteracting attempts to erase the event from public consciousness. Please stay tuned for detailed coverage of these stories and more. Nikkei Asia, China has accused Britain's MI6 of recruiting two Chinese state employees as spies, a married couple, who were allegedly lured by promises of money and security. The husband, surnamed Wang, studied in the UK in 2015, where he was approached by MI6 through surreptitious dinners and tours. Desiring financial gain, Wang accepted a high-paying consulting role before being trained in espionage and tasked with gathering information upon his return to China. MI6 also persuaded Wang to recruit his wife, Zhu, who worked at a core government unit, by offering double the money. The Chinese State Security Ministry is continuing its investigation into the case. South China Morning Post, Hong Kong stocks surged significantly, marking the biggest rise in a month, driven by positive data from the mainland services sector. The Hang Seng Index climbed 2.5% to 18,533.34, with the tech index soaring 3%. Major tech companies like Tencent, Alibaba, and JD.com saw notable gains, buoyed by the Tsaishin Services PMI rising to 51.7, indicating the fastest growth pace in two years. This positive momentum followed two weeks of declines due to profit booking and erratic economic recovery. UBOT Holding, a semiconductor company, marked a strong debut on the growth enterprise market, jumping 20% from its IPO price. Other Asian markets also posted gains, with indices in Japan, Australia, and South Korea showing positive movements. Associated Press, as the 35th anniversary of the Tiananmen Square crackdown approaches, Overseas communities are actively preserving the memory of the event. Scholar Rowena He, who was denied a visa renewal in Hong Kong, has been giving talks globally to speak for those silenced in China. Despite the suppression of commemorations in Hong Kong, including the disbandment of vigil organizers and removal of related statues, overseas activities have increased. These include talks, rallies, and exhibitions in countries like the US, Britain, and Canada. The New York Museum dedicated to Tiananmen, opened by former student leader Wang Dan, has attracted significant attention, and plans for temporary exhibitions aim to further spread awareness. The play May 35th in London moved audiences deeply, highlighting the enduring impact of the crackdown and the importance of global efforts to keep the memories alive. Japan Times. Chinese tourists are projected to inject a staggering 6.79 trillion yuan, $938 billion, into the domestic economy this year, surpassing pre-pandemic levels for the first time. This surge, which represents an 11% increase over 2019 spending, highlights the resilience and robust recovery of China's tourism sector. Julia Simpson, president of the World Travel and Tourism Council, noted that Chinese visitors are beginning to travel again, and this trend is expected to grow. This resurgence in domestic tourism is a significant boost to the mainland economy, reflecting the pent-up demand for travel and leisure activities among Chinese citizens after the COVID-19 pandemic. South China Morning Post. A new study has revealed that by the end of the century, the surface area of some lakes in the Qinghai Tibet Plateau could expand by more than 50%, largely due to increased rainfall and glacier melt driven by climate change. 
this expansion could add over 600 billion tons of water volume to the plateau's lakes, potentially causing massive economic impacts worth billions. The study, published in Nature Geoscience, warns that without mitigation, over 1,000 kilometers of roads, 500 settlements, and 10,000 square kilometers of ecological areas could be submerged. The King Tibet Plateau, known as the Water Tower of Asia, is extremely vulnerable to climate change, serving as an early warning for broader global warming effects. The researchers predict significant expansion of lakes across the plateau, with the northern part experiencing the largest increase. This phenomenon poses a serious threat to infrastructure, local livelihoods, and could exacerbate poverty levels. Additionally, the expanding lakes could increase greenhouse gas emissions, creating a feedback loop that further accelerates climate change. South China Morning Post Australian Broadcasting Corporation Australians are showing a strong preference for global engagement over national self-interest, as revealed by an exclusive Q plus a YouGov poll. The survey of 1,510 Australians highlights a significant support for the International Criminal Court ICC, to investigate both Hamas and Israeli leaders for war crimes, with 79% backing this stance. Interestingly, Two-thirds of Australians would even welcome the arrest of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu if evidence warranted it. This sentiment is particularly strong among younger and Labour voters. Moreover, Australians are divided on the country's support for Ukraine, with opinions split on whether to continue aid or prioritise domestic issues. Concerns about the leadership of the United States, regardless of whether Joe Biden or Donald Trump wins the next election, are prevalent with 60% of Australians worried about Trump's potential return to the White House. Despite these concerns, a majority still believe in the importance of the US-Australia alliance for national security. Additionally, a significant majority of Australians, 71%, support the idea of pressuring the US and UK to close the case against WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. Al Jazeera, media titan Rupert Murdoch, at the age of 93, has tied the knot for the fifth time with Elena Jukova, a 67-year-old retired molecular biologist originally from Russia. The wedding took place at Murdoch's Vineyard Estate in Bel Air, California, just three months after their engagement was announced. The ceremony was attended by notable figures such as Robert Kraft, owner of the New England Patriots, and News Corp CEO Robert Thompson. Murdoch's fourth marriage to Jerry Hall ended in divorce in 2022. His previous spouses include Chinese-born TV executive Wendy Deng, Scottish-Australian journalist Anna Torv, and Australian flight attendant Patricia Booker. Last year, Murdoch called off his engagement to and Leslie Smith, a dental hygienist-turned-conservative radio host, just weeks before the wedding. Murdoch, who has six children, stepped down from his roles as head of Fox News's parent company and News Corp in November, passing control of his media empire to his son, Lachlan. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO Brief via email.